Yeah. It's more, now they say it nowadays. You can see it in the yeah. corner. Uh, but because we are going to pay attention to this thing that I just explained about the body first and about the details of the northern and the south style, the choice that we have to make in our imaginary boyfriend, you immediately understand why the imaginary boyfriend actually is very important, right? Because the imaginary boyfriend gives you the opportunity to make the choice. But I want you to be consequent. So you choose for the northern or the southern approach continuously, right? And then uh, your imaginary boyfriend is always going to be the same. But your imaginary boyfriend also has the same style as you, right? So if that one does detail, then you have to do detail, right? So if you imagine your boyfriend to do all kind of uh, detailed things, you react in the same way. So you're like almost like a mirror in that sense, mirroring the style of your imaginary boyfriend. You have to understand the initiative is in your imaginary boyfriend, right? Not in you. That's, that's difficult to understand, right? That, because that means that you have to think forward. And that is an important part of Tai Chi Chuan because you have to learn to think strategically in your moves. Most people, they live in the now, so they only make the move. But Tai Chi Chuan is about thinking forward and knowing what the move is going to do and understanding what it's going to do and making the move one at the same time, right? So if somebody pushes you, how do you react? Your reaction has an instant understanding and action at the same time. And the whole principle of Tai Chi Chuan is that your understanding and the action are one, right? They are the same. Yes? Yes? Okay, so let's uh, try. No more questions left? No more questions left? Let's see. I was kind of hoping that I would already be downstairs with uh, the class today. I'm almost ready downstairs. Uh, but uh, I, because of being busy with the bird, actually, I made a mess out of uh, things. So I didn't do things the way I, I should have done. All right, very good. Hands on the dance. Feel how the dance is growing, how your weight is sinking on your heels. Make sure you balance yourself with your toes. The three gates are open. Try not to lean on your belly. Try just to hold your belly. Keep your tongue to your palate. Try to do mind and my are connected. By standing on the heels, you also open up the extra channels in your body. It's important. Especially for the Chinese medicine students. All right, let me open up the lower water wheel. It's the earth wheel. Try to keep your body as straight up if you can, as you can when you go down. But you really try to balance yourself. And close. Open up. Is the Dumai and the Remai and the large circulation through all the six channels. Moving back into the Remai towards the Dantian, the Yang and the Yin circulation, and open, lift up. This is already a, an attack mode, right? You're already defending yourself. So imagine what you're doing at this moment. 
and move forward, press down. And lift. Sink, throw away. And rotate to the right, scoop. Move to the left. Move to the right. Step in. Hold on. Roll back. Hold in. Lift. And throw it. Catch. Press, step in, hold on, lift, and press, small split, sink inwards, Come forward. Large step. Move the moon and the sun. And large step. Move back. Block. Inward. Lift up. Pull back. Lift up the head above the grass. Look past the wall. Block. Lift. And split and press. Arm press action. Large split. Come in, press forward. And come in. Bird stick up his head, peasant, and block. Lift and hook. And hook, foot, turn the whip. We talked about this last one. Close, inward. Jump up from the grass. Move in. Like a snake. Come in. And press. Flying back. And rotate, swimming dragon. Another swimming dragon. Leaping and diving and leaping from the waters. Move forward. Dragons, ten dragons landing on the rock. And come in. Back, drag, take a dragon fire. Large slap, come in, open, and another large slap. <coughs> All right, very good. Horse neck, one, sink through your knees, 
Swing through your knees. And sink through your knees. Lift up, kick, cut. Another horse neck, right backwards. Cut, 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 and kick. Pull back, push forward. And put a hand on your head. Lift the hand this year and put it on the earth. Rotate it on the Thunder palms. Step in. One, two, three, push. And lift. Renee, you're missing one part. Which one am I missing? Um. This part. No, I'm going there. Oh, yeah, yeah, I missed one part, yeah. Okay, no worry, no worry. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, oh, we can go back there. You want to go back there? Okay. <laughs> so then, uh, after the horse thing, up, push, in, thunder, thunder fist. You're right. It's a beautiful part, so step in and step in. Nail, son of a bitch. Huh? And in, <laughs> spit. It's a whip. Okay. Land on the hill. Press down. And lift up. Now put on the head. I was thinking like it's coming a little bit fast. I'm missing something, but okay. Now the seal, put the seal. Practiced this last week. And put the seal in. Turn the palms. One, two, rotate, inward, forward, press, rotate, pull, back. Break and hammer. Step out. Break. Step in sideways, in palm, and nail it. Come in. Uh, step in. Move backwards. Move backwards. Monkey repulsing. Right. And come in, lift and close. Then come in, rotate part with the fists open, shift the right foot forward, shift the left foot forward, kick, swipe, come inward, hit, and inward. Come in, take this, close, 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 come in. And sorry, don't yet. Sorry, I'm going to let you food there. All right, so we went through the moves relatively slow. Uh, you had choice to make your own choice and try to be as neutral as possible myself so that you could make your own choices. Uh, how did that work with the interaction with your imaginary boyfriend and your moves? No, oh, like this uh, just falls out. I must have been still um, trying to follow the moves. I'm sorry, what did you say, Chris? I'm still thinking about trying to copy the moves and I'm not sort of using using my mind to... Uh, okay. I, start, I started off trying to do that, but then I got caught up in trying to follow. <laughs> the first bit was, because I'm a bit more familiar with it, I was able to sort of 
think about sort of like um, using an arm lock arm break and so on on the roll back type movements of that and the press and then after that I think I just I just lost it it was just following the movements and uh, yeah okay but for the movements that you think you know how did it go there sort of okay I'm not particularly good at the visualization so sort of, I've really got to work on that to be honest it's, it's not so much visualization it's more like feeling into what the other person would do that's a difficult part uh, because you uh, you have to uh, feel or see that a person does something so you will react yeah. differently uh, and you, then you you, you have basically to want to project the intention of the other person and you're mm -hmm. reacting on that intention so that means that you recognize the intention of the other person you're not visualizing that person per mm -hmm. se, but you're recognizing the intention of that person so that means that you what you want to learn is that you gradually start having an idea about what your own moves are about so that at the moment when you come through your form, you recognize the intention of your opponent and why you make the movements. So they are not like, when you are in, a, in an attack mode, right? Then your moves, they have to be the aggressor. So it's your intention on which your imaginary boyfriend has to react. We do that another time, right? Then at that moment, you are the aggressor. Now you are the defender. So that means that your imaginary boyfriend is doing the aggression, right? So that's different. And the intention has to exper be experienced as real, right? Like you're really doing that. Like if you would do that, I had one teacher was really funny with that. Um, <clears throat> you would really go through all this drama. So you would go like, yeah. <sighs> <sighs> I would really make this drama in his face to get to the point where he would really make his intentions very clear in what he was doing at that moment. And he would, he would really read in his face in that sense, his uh, surprise about the move that's coming to him, even though he played it already like 10,000 times. Yep. So he, he tried to make sure that his intention remained as genuine as possible to that playing. He studied also Chinese opera. So, uh, you know, playing like that was for him like a necessary part of his, basically his daily routine. Uh, but uh, yeah, it is It is actually what we try to do. We try to keep a neutral face, you know, it doesn't really matter. But internally, you have to be able to say like, okay, I'm making a movement and I'm blocking something that's coming to me, right? And what I do with this blocking, you know, whether I hold somebody or whether I just block with both hands and I keep it there, uh, it means that my body has to work with this. So I have to make sure that if I, don't, I don't do like this, right? I have to block it. And I have to make sure that I know what I do so that I don't have to avoid uh, getting scared, right? Right in my movement. Because that's what it is. You want when you when you make this move, right? You're coming from here and you go like, like this, this is a block, right? And it is something that's coming to your face. But if the moment when you make it like real, it's like right, that is a very different kind of move. And at that moment, because of your fear, you also scatter your chi. And as a result of scattering your chi, you actually lose the momentum. You actually lose the jing of your body. So you try to make it as real as possible so that it is really like an attack. And you feel like, you know, this is going to hit my face. So I have to be very precise in making sure that doesn't happen. The intention has to be there. And you have to become fearless in your movements. That is, that is the intention of the movements. Yes? And that's the difficult part. So shall we try one more time? It's really very hot in here. I see it is like 29 degrees here in this room. Yeah, yeah, you too. Yeah. Amazing. This afternoon I was busy with a client. It was 30 degrees. I was like, oh, I have tomorrow I have to do a massage. Uh, how am I going to do that with 30 degrees? Yeah. Anyway, let's uh, try one more time. Now we go through a few moves and then uh, we will go back to that immediately, right? So we start a little bit more far in the form and we start with uh, this one, right? This is uh, easy. Then we go rotate around the rocks. Yeah, so we, so here we are already avoiding, right? We are already avoiding. So avoid block, right? Block. This is southern style more. Yes, and then block and catch, right? 
So someone is coming, and instead of doing this, right, what you do is this. So this move that you make backwards actually is to avoid the same thing, like what you would normally do like this by instinct, right? But now at this moment, you make it strategic so that you actually have a better position because you have this leg free and you could kick somebody. And you have to be aware of the fact that you could kick that one. So this one has to be light and nimble and available, right? So then when you then do that, you come in like this, you can show into somebody's place because this leg is nimble. You now you, you come in, you kind yourself as a projectile into somebody. So you seem to go back way, uh, but because of your leg going that way, you actually you go forward. And it means at the moment when you go forward, this already goes forward, right? This is the first thing that goes forward. So you, you seem to retreat, but then, you know, you basically you throw somebody that way, right? So you throw somebody that way. So at the moment when you come in with this move, one, two, three block, right? And you come in, it is not just a matter of pushing forward, but it is actually a matter of pushing away, right? So if you have come this 90 degrees, this is just enough to make sure that somebody goes that way. Yes? You feel that? Okay, so we try to do that again. We start from here. Go slowly. And scoop. So when you scoop, your body goes into your left foot, right? So you scoop and you rotate. So you you carry somebody in your body. So you've done 10 yields, right? You've done 10 yields and you take somebody inside you. And at the moment when you have them inside you, is that at that moment your belly rotates, right? So it means you take somebody on your belly, right? Yeah, on your belly, right? And then you rotate. So you, if that would be a person, they stand there, right? You go over the head, you take the neck, you take the belly and you pull them backwards, right? Pull the backwards towards you, and then you rotate, go sideways. You see how many intentions already in there in this little bit of movements, right? So okay, so move and pull. Normally I only talk about take out the butt and the shoulder and pull them with you, but this time you're standing from the back from somebody, pull them in and then throw them away because of doing like this, and then you move all of a sudden to left, you actually throw them away. So you create momentum because of letting them fall through you, right? What mostly people are afraid of is that people come into their center. This is what you see with a lot of martial arts. They try to make sure somebody doesn't come into their center. And it tends to when you actually use this hollowness of your center uh, to bring people there because at that moment they fall into this hole in their own uh, balance, right? So you come in and then you throw them away. And at the moment when you block, right? You come in in that block, and then at that moment you go even more sideways because you're here like that. Uh, but then here you go even more, you block, right? You come in, this is nimble, right? This is nimble. So here you move into somebody and you actually move all the way to 90 degrees so that they actually go that way, not that way, yes? But at the moment when you come forward, you lift in and you push here. This is the push. This will be counter push going backwards. So this has to be strong enough if you do this, even if it's just a little bit, just pushes somebody far away enough. But at, at the moment when you pull back, that you actually have something to pull because they're out of balance. So it is like pulling and pushing, pulling and pushing, right? This is basically what it is. All right, so from here, then at the moment when you come back, you have done that, you step in and you pull down. And it's the same, right? A whole bunch of movements that you're making there. This is also an elbow, elbow hit at the moment when you come back, right? It's like this. When you come back like this, right? Elbow, somebody behind you. So you could, you could be the one that's being pulled back at this moment. So the same movement that you did here, right? You pull somebody back and you throw them away. Here, after you have done this one, right? And you pull down. This is what's happening to you. So you're being pulled down, yes. And then you use your elbow hit going backwards. And at the moment when you come forward, you ah, oh, you throw them away on the backside, right? So this is one of the intentions that you can have, right? So that you really throw them off on the backside, right? Understand? 
how to train is so nice because every little detail can have so many intentions. Only your own imagination is the boundary of what you can do with Tai Chi Chuan, right? But that's the nice, that's the nicest part. So at the moment when you have done this part, they you just been throwing somebody away like that. And at that moment, this hand again takes the arm and then just lifts it up to the other side. So this would be already lifting up. You're holding at the wrist and the elbow and you lift them up, see? So somebody has just been following this way, right? And at that moment, because of making this move, you move inward and you move the palm inward on the backside, right? Because the wrist is there, you move them inward and then you pull them back inward. So you go, right? Because the index finger is still pointing towards this palm and you hold the palm, the other person's palm here like this and you pull them backwards. Can you imagine what's happening to somebody? Somebody's wrist is being taken, lifted up, right? Folded inward and being pushed backwards. This is going to hurt here, right? And then it's also being pushed downward at the same time. So they lose their balance to try to avoid being crushed in their joints, right? <laughs> we have already done three moves now, right? <laughs> if you have to go through the whole form, it's going to be expensive. Um, so we come here, uh, come down, lift, throw, and then at that moment, we come back, come in. Now, this moment, this foot is going around somebody, and at that moment, you do the same thing, you throw around, and you push them away that way, right? But this is the same, this, you can do the same. And then the hand press, and this one comes back in, right? Comes in, lift, and then the hand press comes forward. It could very well be that you also squash somebody's wrist around here. Right? It can be like that the same. Uh, but it would also be that you put somebody's wrist against his uh, shoulder by holding the shoulder and the wrist at the same time. So if you lock somebody in like this, so it's a lock, then it has one. You see? And then at the moment, because you lock it in, and at the same time you get this pushing power there, yes, then at that moment you actually not just tie it in, but at the moment when you do that, you go and you un uh, dislocate the shoulder. Right? You get that? Okay. These are not easy movements, right? But once you've got them in your mind, you know, you see like, oh, if I'm in a situation, maybe I can use it one day, right? So at the moment when you have done this, little, little split. So that means that if you have done this against the shoulder, you take the arm, take the arm down like a, like a handle, right? You take the arm down and then you press it inward. So that means that you keep the shoulder frozen and you, you take the arm down and then you lock it against the shoulder because you hold the shoulder here, you put the arm back up so you put somebody out of balance there also at the same time. So you see how many different kind of small moves are in there. In, down, <coughs> press. It's not just that you're pressing in somebody's body, that's the obvious one, but it's the hidden ones that make it interesting, right? <coughs> then at the moment when you come with a long pull, at the long pull you come down, right? And you make a big step and you make a long pull so that somebody really has been pulled out of its comfort zone. And then when they're sliding towards the floor, you actually push one shoulder up or downwards and you hold them at the wrist. So you basically uh, put their arms in a disadvantage. And then you could take knee against the shoulders or you can push the foot against the shoulder and then drag it down, right? In the other direction, remove your shoulders. Okay, so we have done a few moves. Oh, let's let me finish this part first uh, because that's this is this is easy. So you just, just done this part, and you turn over your shoulders and you sink inward, right? Somebody's trying to lean on you, and you hold them on your wrist, and you allow them to lean while you're sinking inward. And then at that moment, when you come forward, what you do is you push your hands like this. Remember in the Ambu Formula Chikung, that we do this movement, right? Do this movement. We go forward, that's this one, right? So we are here, right? We're coming here, and then once we come forward, and we press with the lower part of the hand and we launch ourselves on the back side so to create space, right? This space has to throw somebody over. You have to topple them over. But this one at that moment gives this extra hard push on the inside uh, while they're being pushed backwards in general with your whole hand and your whole body, right? 
so that they do hurt when you push backwards. They're not just being pushed backwards, but they also hurt at the same time, right? Because this one comes here on the chest, hits inward and takes the breath away while you're pushing forward by taking their place. So they're going backwards and they're being hit. Right? So push, right? You break an arm and you fall back and you're exactly the same. And you stop down, turn around. Okay, good. <laughs> Everybody got that clear? You see how many moves are hidden in this little piece, right? There are so many moves hidden in that piece. It is amazing, actually, if you think about it. And then the whole form is like that. So you understand when I say, like, okay, Tai Chi Chuan form starts with 13, and then you take it apart, and before you know it, it's 276 uh, moves, right? I always say I'm 276 years old. Here it comes from, right? 276 moves, <laughs> right? So <clears throat> every move one year. That's what they usually say. You have to learn every year one move. Right? So if I can know 276 moves, that means I've learned the 276 years. Yes? <laughs> so it's for you the same. If you now know five moves, you're only five years old. Yes? Easy enough. Agnes, how old are you? Seven. Seven. Why ah, you're already getting old. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm getting lower now. Now I'm yeah, practicing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you notice yeah. it. You start noticing yeah. it. Your face has uh, started shining uh, really. And before yeah. you know it, it becomes light and white like mine. <laughs> it depends on the light. <laughs> it's just from the light. Yeah. Awesome. I wish I wish I would radiate so much light on the inside. But it's still just a bunch of darkness on the inside. It doesn't really change anything. Uh, this whole enlightenment thing, I don't really believe in it. Would be nice, would be nice, but uh, no. But you just have to try to be a good person. And the rest, uh, we'll see. Yeah. Okay, so Richard, how was it for you? Um, it was difficult to, to um, follow the applications uh, exactly how uh, you you manipulate uh, your opponent's arm or hand or some mm -hmm. so that's uh, one, one of the things that we do with the wood fitness we try to develop a particular kind of agility it's not just agility of your body but it's also agility of your mind and at the moment when you do tai chi chuan because of all the different kind of details that are in there you have to have a very agile mind but this is actually what we're trying to practice right now to try to develop that kind of agility that is required. Because when you're in a fight, when you're really in a fight, I don't know, have you ever been in a fight, Richard? Like a real fight, not like uh, in a sports center or class or something like this. Yes, I had uh, a few situations uh, in my life, yeah. Okay, you know how scary it is, right? Yeah, yeah. Very stressful. Have you yeah. ever been in a fight, Chris? Yeah, but they're very short fights. So, uh... All the fights are short. Don't worry about it. So they never run as well because it's very tiring to become... Uh, a real fight, you mean? real fight, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you ever been in a real fight, Yolanda? No. No? Agnes? Yeah. Okay, very good. Uh, normally, women are not being attacked by men, but men uh, they have this problem because apparently men, other men seem to think that it is normal for men that they fight and that they like fighting or something like this. It's so like when they see a problem with you, they... They become aggressive with you, especially when you have something that they want or when you do something better than they do, right? So you can get into all kinds of uh, situations as a man. As a woman, usually people are polite enough to say, like, oh, it's a woman. You know, it is positive sexism, right? It's positive sexism. You know? uh, if they do that to us, uh, they, because if you, if you try to be very feminine as a man, then they say you're gay, so they definitely want to beat you, <laughs> right? So it doesn't really work uh, like that. But the kind of agility that you have to have at the moment when somebody attacks you is just the clarity of mind to be able to respond on what they're doing. This is what Tai Chi Chuan is all about, right? At the moment when we are busy doing these moves, uh, you create the kind of speed in your mind. Like now I'm talking very fast specifically to explain this uh, because you try to create a kind of openness and speed in your mind so that you are timely in your response. And what Tai Chi Chuan wants is that you are immediate in your response, right? so that you don't you don't have time to think well normally in a in kung fu for instance you learn okay if somebody responds like this i have to respond like that 
right? This is what you see in most Tai Chi Chuan classes. They say like, okay, somebody responds like this. And what you do in Tai Chi Chuan actually, you learn generalizations. And in these generalizations, you learn all the different options that are hidden in there. And your mind has to be agile enough to immediately able to respond on an understanding that you get and then do the writing of all the different options that you've already thought about before. That's why training is so important, right? Because exercise helps you to every time reimagine and reimagine your movements. And as a result of that, you get a certain point and understanding. You might never become a Tai Chi master, but your mind might develop that kind of agility uh, through which you, what, is, what in Tai Chi Chuan is being said, or in Taoism is being said, uh, that is enhancing your intelligence. Right? Because intelligence is only being able to see more options than anybody else does. Yes, Yolanda? Is that, is that also when you are um, trying to uh, restabilize yourself, when you unbalance, that you practice the rotating part? And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Same. But also, at one point, when you are very fast in your mind, you have to remain stable. Like physically, also, you have to remain stable. You see that when we practice the bamboo formula, Qigong, this is all about developing stability. By the time we're going to start in the app with the Wudang Fitness 2, you see that we use very slow movements specifically because they are so challenging for your balance. Uh, your body tends to fall when you do something very slow. And this is one of the things that is the least understood from Tai Chi Chuan is that the reason why the moves are so slow is because you tend to fall more easily when you go slow. That is the reason why people like Kung Fu and Karate and stuff like this, because everything is fast. So you can pass the moment of dropping and falling without noticing. That is why for somebody who's skillful in Tai Chi Chuan, almost no martial art is a match uh -huh. in a real fight, right? In a real fight. Yeah, because uh, they all pass by on their balancing things, even though they talk about balance, like uh, Muhammad Ali, you know, he was always talking about balancing and he was making it into a dance, but because he is dancing, he's flying. If you would fight with somebody Tai Chi Chuan and they would be like really trained, they would very easily throw over Muhammad Ali because he wouldn't be able to stand long time still. And as a result, it never really developed a balance. Uh, he needs to all the time go another point because at that moment it is difficult to find a spot where you can hold him. But once you can grasp him, yeah, that is when he's flying, Yes, and at that moment, you can bend him in another direction. And ironically, uh, Bruce Lee, who is uh, fabulous for all his martial arts and his prowess and his bragging, just like Muhammad Ali was at the same time, you also see that he is using the same technique where he's all the time flying. And so uh, he also isn't necessarily very balanced in the way how he stands on the floor. He's very balanced in himself. Yeah? That is another thing. Like Muhammad Ali was also very emotional. So... Uh, on several layers, uh, it would have been an easy target for a good Tai Chi master, but that I would be able to attack him because, you know, I only need one hit, one beat and I'm flat on the floor, so no problem. Yes. So it's not what I'm trying to say, uh, <clears throat> but it means that if you're very good in Tai Chi Chuan, you're fast enough, you will be able to find the hole very quickly and avoid being beaten. That's the whole point. So kickboxing is the same. These people can kick you very hard. But if you can avoid being kicked, they are easy to beat. The Wing Chun, same. If you can avoid being uh, being beaten, they are they're very easy to defeat. But I, I remember you saying when we were doing pushing hand that to stay in contact with your opponent also gives you the uh, awareness of how to overrule. That's or... right. Yeah. But that is a learning training technique, right? Push hands is a learning technique. But but when when we practice this um, these these uh, this form and we imagine our application that is possible, yeah. there are only a few who are really pushing away that you know like okay you cannot pull that same person again back. When you when you are practicing. At a certain point, you start noticing it doesn't really matter if it's 10 imaginary boyfriends or one imaginary boyfriend. Yeah. You don't have to make it into a linear story, right? And they are just at every time it's an opportunity. Something's happening. Your imaginary boyfriend is coming from all directions at the same time. Doesn't really okay. Yes? Yeah. Okay. So what I like to propose is that, you know, practice these moves one more time. So from here, you go make these moves and you go through them. 
and you try to work on this imaginary boyfriend thing and you try to uh, imagine all the different options and how that actually affects your movements, then you can resettle again on the northern or southern uh, style of movement. It doesn't really matter that much. But the primarily, primarily is that you understand uh, that, that the interaction takes place and that that becomes part of your movement. And uh, that you, you now close the door for any other movement than at that moment, right? Because in touch when normally all the moves are a little bit abstract. Uh, <clears throat> but now at this moment, you really commit to a particular kind of movement every time. So that you really go through uh, the application that you have in mind. Yes? Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Just try to see what you can remember. It's only a few moves, I guess. You will be doing okay. I mix up with other touchy forms. <laughs> no, just, just, just I, try. I if, you, if, you up, if you mix up, if you mix up moves, it doesn't really matter. That this, this point. Don't worry about it. If you mix up forms, I don't really care right now. It's just about trying to understand what your movements are doing, right? So don't worry. You're, there's no wrong moves today. Oh no, that's not right, Agnes. That's not. Right. <laughs> just kidding. Uh, Richard, make sure that when you lift up your knees, your feet remain under it so that you do not lift up your knees and then lift up your foot behind it because that makes you very vulnerable. So when you, your friends, you put your foot behind you and you lift up your knee, put your knee backwards, but your foot remains behind it so that you stay in control over your foot. Otherwise, you break yourself on your front side and it will throw you out of balance, right? Yeah. Right. The leg goes down, the foot goes down, and the foot comes down like that. Instead of like this, 
right? Okay. Yeah. In the meantime, I'm going to say goodbye to my kids. I'll come back in a second, okay?
Watch your shoulders, Shalom, that your shoulders do not become too high. All right, and you're finished, you're finished. All right, how did it work out? It was not, it was not easy, yeah, I thought. I tried to, uh, to stick as much as possible within the form, otherwise you go in all different uh, directions. Uh, just to, 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 to explore a bit what can be in the movements of the form and uh, that's difficult uh, because you you must keep uh, um, um, trying to trying to to make up or to visualize what what, what can happen. Now basically, only five moves, but the opportunities of what you can do is almost endless already. Right? Yeah. Nice, nice that you noticed that it's so difficult. Good, Chris. Okay, I, I found it very difficult. Echoing Richard. Yeah, same. Really, because really. I'm still sort of having to think about how to do the movements. Um, so, uh, well, like I said to Agnes, there is no way how you can do a movement wrong if your intention is right, right? So at the moment when you make a move, you make a move like this. Uh, you know what you're at that moment when you what you're doing at that moment. But at the moment when you change the intention and you just make a slight different move with your elbow, for instance, because of this different intention. And at that moment, it's still the same move, but just a little bit bigger, and then all of a sudden it becomes an elbow, elbow uh, hit or something like this, right? So then the same, same movement all of a sudden becomes 
something completely different. And then at the moment when you go forward, this becomes like a cut, right? Instead of a folding of somebody's uh, arm or something like this. So the, the same moves, they are so close to each other. Uh, no, so different moves are sometimes so close to each other in their neutral state that the understanding of all their different options and the musculature and the nerve management for these for these different moves. This is basically what it's all about. This is what your training is all about. And that, that is what is enhancing your intelligence and your quickness of mind also, because you have to have it discovered already before you have to have to use it. And you have to have you have to have it in your system. And it is also the reason why uh, many people they think they have to train every day for a long time for the rest of their life. Uh, because it is so difficult to remember all the different kind of options because the longer you train the more options you discover right i had the feeling when i was doing this with uh, more application uh, mind that i was more practicing in a kung fu way than in a tai chi way because of uh, some movements are quite clear of what application you could do and some are for my feeling at least uh, a pathway to go to the next move what, what is in touch train is that the moment when you make a move it is a little bit of, a, of an ambiguity what is the intention so in the move itself it is not exactly clear what the movement has to be used for no. and at the moment when you go into the intricacies of it and you try to unfold unpack the movement you see how many things are possible the awareness of all the things that are possible will enhance the way how you use the ambiguity of the movements. Can you say ambiguity in Dutch? No, ambiguity. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know what the meaning is of it. I, I have an idea, but I don't know exactly. Sorry. It is, no, not no. no. It's more like it, it, it can be it can be butter, it can be fish. Okay. Right? Mm. So you can't really know what it is. When somebody is, something is ambiguous, like when you make an ambiguous remark, for instance, somebody says, do you love me? And somebody says, hmm. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you know, like, okay. It's a bit vague. Yeah, yeah. yeah. ambiguous is like vague a little yeah. bit. But uh, ambiguous is full of intent, but you know, you don't know where it is. Uh -huh. Right. I have a Chinese wife, right? You know that? And uh, Chinese women, uh, they answer a lot of questions with hmm. Yeah. So, because they don't want to commit themselves to something because they want to please you, that's just a job. Yeah? They want to please you. So they say, mm, and then it's up to you to interpret it. As a Westerner, then you think like, please be clear. <laughs> yeah. You want to go to cinema tonight? Mm. Okay, is that a no? <laughs> okay, so it's a yes. Mm. <laughs> right? So you, basically, then it becomes like a guessing game. Things become like a guessing game. And Tai Chi Chuan is a little bit like that. So you have to see your form as a wife who says, hmm, right? That's basically what you have to do. Yeah? <laughs> so your imaginary boyfriend says all the time, okay, what can we do? Mm. Yeah. I force it to you. Right? So that's basically it. Yes? Okay. Good. Any questions left? Agnes, was it fun for you? Uh, I uh, used to be a little bit uh, on the camera and then yeah, I, I saw you on the side. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> oh, okay. The movements, the movements that you were doing inside the camera, they were actually done quite okay. Right? So you don't have to be embarrassed about anything. I saw the dance and sometimes I broke some, some arms and some shoulders and so. Yeah, that's fun. okay. That's yeah. no problem. Don't worry about it. Uh, that's the nice thing about learning. You never have to be embarrassed about anything. So that's why in class, I'm never embarrassed about all my mistakes uh, because uh, however embarrassing they are, they're also part of my learning process, right? Yeah. For instance, when you're teaching, sometimes you just shift and you just skip a part of the movements. <laughs> yeah, that's happened where you fall or something because you're looking at the screen or whatever kind of things. Nothing is, nothing is ever perfect. That's the nice thing. There's a Japanese art, I forgot what is the name of it. And when you break a cup, they glue it, and then with a gold paint or something like this, they make they make the cracks extra visible, and then they become more valuable. Uh, so this is basically what life is all about, right? Making the cracks, making the cracks useful. What? 
Is it different than craquelé? Yeah, different than craquelé. Craquelé is like glued together, so you can see the cracks, but they do they put gold inside the cracks okay. so that you can really see the cracks even more clearly. <laughs> so craquelé is just like okay, the 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 uh, the glazing is crackled, yeah. right? But there is the cup is really falling apart, and then they glue it back together, and then they put gold everywhere. So that is waterproof again, of course, uh, but also gold paint or something like this, mm. just to make sure that you know you can see that it has been broken and repaired. Okay. It's actually very kitschy if you think about it. <laughs> but uh, on the other hand, it's also very charming. Like for instance, uh, uh, the other day, uh, my wife. Uh, dropped something on a plate and a piece broke off and uh, I glued immediately the piece back and I was like I have to go buy gold paint that is something that you then pick up on that I said thou wish you're not supposed to throw anything away you try to reuse everything all the time that's the, the whole point you try like I have a vest that's already like over 30 years old uh, it's falling apart but it's still warm so why would I throw it away right uh, probably I can wear it until the end of my life. Uh, it wouldn't look like anything attractive anymore. But uh, and it is with the, your plates exactly the same. So they break. Okay, good. You try to fix them until they really cannot be handled anymore at all. That they're just like a whole bunch of small pieces or something like this, right? Uh, <clears throat> but she was like, oh, but uh, in uh, Korea and China, when something is broken, that means that the uh, chi is gone. Yeah, because the design of the maker is gone at that moment. Yes, but the whole point is then if you repair it, it becomes your cheese or it becomes your plate. Before that time, you're just borrowing the designer plate, but now it becomes your plate because you bought it. That's also so cool. you, have, you have bought it, but it only becomes yours because of what you do with it, right? And it's the same with your touch transform. The touch transform, as you learn it, it's from Wudang. But at the moment when you have been broken by it and you have repaired yourself, then at that moment, it becomes your form. Yes? So you have to break it apart. And then put it back together. That's that's basically it. That's that's how touch train works. This is how you make it yours, right? Okay. I hope everybody had a nice time. Uh, it's time to finish also the class. And uh, I had a lot of fun with you watching you guys. You did very well, by the way. And I'm not saying that because that's good advertisement to say that, but actually you did do very well. I can see you really struggle, and that is important. At the moment when you see that people are not struggling to just pass or buy on it, then that is a little bit of a pity because it's such a lot of effort to try to continuously figure out what I have to say. <laughs> yes? Okay, thanks, Renee. Okay, you're welcome. Take bye. good care. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. I stopped first with the recording. <laughs>